But today on the show, we will be talking to Tokyo Bronx and get a little feel about what they are, who they are, and what they're doing. So, it's going to be a great show. Stick around, and we're going to have a lot of fun. Welcome back, Puerto Ricans. I'm Mo, and I'm here with Bronx, no, Bronx, Tokyo. No? No, the other way. No, the other way around, Tokyo, Bronx. <laughs> Don't you take that back. Tokyo, Bronx. It's all good. Yeah. So we're here with Tokyo, Bronx, and we're here to talk about everything they have to bring mm -hmm. to the community these days. I'm very much interested, so I'm going to leave to you guys. Tell me yeah. all about Tokyo okay. Bronx. Um, well, I'm Rosa. I'm the co-founder of an affiliate brand of Tokyo Bronx, and my affiliate brand is Tokyo Bronx AECG, which stands for Anime, Comics, and Games. So uh, that is a social Big Sur networking group for any, all fans and creatives to just come together for the love and creativeness of anime, comics, and games. Because in a nutshell, like the beginning origins is that back in 2019, we saw like there was these basically six degrees of separation. We saw there were these small communities, especially in the Bronx, of creators and fans that, you know, they were looking for others in that genre. So they go to conventions and sometimes it's like, why do we gotta go all the way to Manhattan or Brooklyn? It's difficult to find people. We were like, why don't we create like a little mini social mixer where before you go to cons or after you go to the cons, you know, you get to meet people, you get to meet creatives and you can collaborate. You can do meetups way before the convention because it could get very overwhelming. You know, you've been to New York Comic Con before. <laughs> you've been to Anime NYC before. It's like so overwhelming. You just want to go in, get by yourself and get out. So we were like, let's create, you know, something that people love to do. So that's where, so, you know, I collaborated with Tokyo Bronx and, you know, we love bringing those cross-cultural fusions and it's, you know, it's been almost five years, four years now and it's gone so much better than, you know, bigger than I expected. And Sean is a creative director here. Let's play a little bit more about that. Right, so I'm Sean, and I'm the creative director of Tokyo <laughs> Rocks. Um, yeah. Um, actually, the way I came into Tokyo Bronx is I was uh, asked to host our show, which is now known as The Chat. Mm -hmm. uh, I was interviewing creatives and people that platformed them as well. So I started off doing that, and then slowly we uh, became a team and a group at and you know, over time, by doing little events together, working together, collaborating, um, I'm really promoting the network aspect of Tokyo Bronx. So, mm -hmm. uh, like Rosa said, we're doing it for years now straight. Uh, it's growing, it's doing well, and you know, we're, we're happy to be here. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Thank you for being here and uh, <laughs> touching on that for a second because I remember as a child myself, mm -hmm. you never had those kind of mixers. And then, then again, not too many people were, how can I say, into the fandom yeah. and geek you had to come sure. and it's not like today where you could come out you could dress mm -hmm. as your cosplay character mm -hmm. wherever whatever it is that you're into from mm -hmm. gaming to anime to science fiction to horror and go out into the world and people will look at you and say oh that's cool yeah but back in my day mm -hmm. not so cool mm -hmm. sometimes you had to and i remember you had to cover up mm -hmm. what you had or bring a change with you go to the con mm -hmm. go into the bathroom change it to your costume, mm -hmm. and then you, you, you're either going to meet up with a couple of friends that you already know yeah. that either have come across the country, mm -hmm. that's like your mm -hmm. once a year event that you get together, you hang out, mm -hmm. but then when it's about time and it's done, boom, back into the, like how they say, the phone will change yeah. back to Clark Kent and back home. Mm -hmm. Well, I think we're still there a little bit, because mm -hmm. like, we still have people that are a little uncomfortable 
showing off their geekdom and you know mm -hmm. what they appreciate and love and then there's others that um you know they like to show it off a lot and they still get a little bit judged for it yeah so the main thing is like what we do is just like try to give you a a, a space to come and do what you want to do and have a good time and also figure out what you where you want to go you know mm -hmm. a lot of people don't know where they want to go with fix well, this experience of mm -hmm. they're like, oh, I watch anime and I love anime. All right, where do I start? I don't want to go to the big convention where I don't know anybody and mm -hmm. it's a whole bunch of people and people might want to talk to me, but they might not and I might not be comfortable with that. So, like, our goal is to get people acclimated to getting into those kind of events, right? Mm -hmm. So we host smaller ones and we do, like, more intimate events and we go and help all other organizations and groups with their events to, you know, get people, like, mm -hmm. Yeah, comfortable. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. As like with you, like when I was saying in my Star Trek group, sometimes people are not, how can I say, socially ingrained when it comes to mm -hmm. the regular world as being yeah. a part of you know the everyday life. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, they love their 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 themes, and they, you know, they adore it all day long. Some people don't get that, mm -hmm. but then they then get ostracized to the corner. Where mm -hmm. events like yours yeah. and like mine's with my group get get together, you're with like-minded people. Some already are, say, acclimated to being around the public outside mm -hmm. of what they do, mm -hmm. and also be free to embellish yeah. in being who they are as far as you know, Miles Morales, yes. Yes. or Kirk, <laughs> yeah. or Goku, yeah, yeah. all these characters, and, it, and it's just characters, but we are adorning of those characters, and when we sit down, it's a whole other language when we start talking yeah. about characters, what that we love, what we don't love. That was the emphasis of like, um, doing what we call our theme-based events, is mm -hmm. like we knew we wanted to do social mixers, but the emphasis was like, how do we get people to get off their couch, you know, something that they do on a regular and just come to these events. So we decided, okay, let's do something theme-based related. So a lot of our social mixers, we try to incorporate, come to a movie night, come to a cosplay night, come to like, we just recently yesterday had an anime murder mystery, you know, oh, and right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so we, we like to- Fortunately, I wasn't around, but I guarantee you, I'm gonna go check out the next we one. We had an amazing no time. Problem. You know, we do, our, our main one is the called ACG Lounge. So it's an mm -hmm. anime comic gaming lounge, and we partner with the Bronx Gaming Network and Kage Karaoke. Mm -hmm. So it's more of like a chill, chillax vibe. You know, we get people sing karaoke, they could play card games, TCG games, they could just watch anime, chill mm -hmm. and get to network. And mm -hmm. we always try to, you know, we also have done art and cosplay auctions as well. So we always try to, you know, dabble mm -hmm. and see what the demographic likes. And like you mentioned, like people like themes and if they find something that's catering to like their interests, like, oh, let me come here and go check this out. Other people are going to be there as well. Yeah, yeah. that's the beauty mm -hmm. of it. And I like that idea because when, again, from my time, it was very hard to find those things. Mm -hmm. I and mean, then for me, Creation Convention was the one that was mm -hmm. advised because it was so yeah. big. Mm -hmm. Star Trek, but on top of Star Trek, there were other people coming in as other characters. Mm -hmm. And then the cosplay was happening at that time, mm -hmm. but only when, you know, in there. So yeah. eventually, as I grew more mm -hmm. into anime and, and finding other places, because they're not very mm -hmm. like easily advertised, not like now, because with social media, yeah. you yeah. can go to so many. It's like, oh my God, it's like <laughs> this season, okay. February, I'm at this one. Yeah. February, and then yeah. March, I, I, I'm at, at, at what is it? A Big Apple. Big Apple goes then to to Connecticut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then Connecticut Comic Con back down to here. Oh, I can't miss Comic Con. Yeah. That's the that's the epicenter, the big the mecca. Yeah. The mecca of it all. Like you say, you can get lost if you don't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I was telling one person who wanted to, to to jump on board and wanted to go to Comic Con for the yeah. first. I said, look. Mm. I'm going to take you to Big Apple. Yeah. You need a taste. Yeah. You just can't Definitely, walk in that's there. A good, that's if a good not, because you're going to see like this tidal wave, <laughs> you will be washed away yeah. and you'll be ashore on the side of <laughs> laid out. Yes. Yeah. Too much, too much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's the other thing, too, right? <laughs> I think like we had a nice little like time skip, right, for a while. Yeah. So people haven't been too social. And the other way they've been social is mm -hmm. online. So you don't really know who who you're dealing with, even right. if there's a video or something, you just don't really know who you're dealing with. So like, you know, people need to like have group activities again to mm -hmm. get themselves yeah. back out into doing cons. So again, that's why we, we started Easy and Simple and doing stuff like the ACG lounge where you can just sit down and not feel pressure. Um, but that's it, you know, we just wanted to start somehow Mm -hmm. And that was the simplest way. And it's know? interesting you mentioned about like that time gap because, you know, the quarantine and everything. Yeah. And so I was, you know, still bringing 
the Tokyo Bronze ACT social mixtures to life and you know for it to have a sudden stop I still was in the momentum wanting to do it so during that COVID time I realized there was so many creatives and fans at home mm. who still wanted to create who still wanted to get seen so that's when I created the ACG show and tell yeah mm. so it was an hour-long series on Instagram live at the time during COVID pandemic uh, the quarantine time and for an hour I would just let them talk like you know say who you are what do you do and let's show us what you got and they would you know they would create something budget wise on their cosplay related they would draw they would you know anything that they wanted to do i even had a someone that was a cook a chef did some little quick uh like a marvel emblem right there on the spot created the chocolate right there so chocolate. it was like it was oh like God, an interesting so yeah enough. so it was interesting to see that that time even though we were <laughs> locked up it was like we still it was finding those ways right. to like get people seen and heard and just to create so now, like it's been what two, three years after that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'm still meeting those people that I spoke to at network mm -hmm. for the first time. You know, it's like wow, like you don't realize yeah. how the power of social media has. You know, in it the does. good, if, yeah. you know, we're still meeting and working together. Yeah, it's it's good because that power allowed the connection to still happen, even though and it build, was in build like what you were mentioning, like right. all those list of all events those list and events <laughs> and just follow and follow. But then when then all those events are gone, you're like. You're sitting there like, <laughs> yes. and then when they bring you the screen, and then now you have other people that you can reach out to, and then mm -hmm. not only is it here, but then becomes global, because now you're reaching yeah. across the globe at the same time. Mm -hmm. And well, it did, I mean, of course, it did lack the function of being physically right. with someone mm -hmm. and getting those social interactions yeah. out of the way, but at the same time, it still kept the whole interaction of the love of fandom mm -hmm. going, because yeah. you know, you now, you didn't have an outlet of a place to go to, mm -hmm. but the outlet was on your screen, and you had another person who you know enjoyed it, and you could spend hours on end without that that over voice. It's, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> Make your final payments, and now you must leave the building. <laughs> you don't have that. You can go on as long as you want, mm -hmm. and yet those connections that you were saying are still there and then become greater. So that when you see them physically now, mm -hmm. and I have to say, it, it's from the past couple of years since the. First time at Comic Con again up till mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. it has gotten larger, yeah. larger than what I've expected. And even mm -hmm. some of the smaller cons mm -hmm. have also blown up yep. big time, and mm -hmm. a lot more people are getting involved. And I guess mm -hmm. in that respect, where those social media outlets and those moments that you're mm -hmm. just online with people created those those connections that now mm -hmm. you're looking forward more now to cons than you ever did before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think also, like, the thing is, is, like, again, like we said, the time skip, like, I think people need friendship as well, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So, like, you have a geekdom, but who do you talk to about it, right? Who do you have that, like, that water cooler moment with? Like, are you watching that show? Do mm -hmm. you see when this thing happened? Like, a lot of people don't have that. I'm, and the thing is, is, like, sharing that with somebody is very valuable. Yes. So, as much as everything else is growing, we're still considering the small scale of stuff which is just like learning to find that group of people that you can go to things with and, mm -hmm. and have a good time with mm -hmm. i think that's a it's beautiful that everything else is growing but that's even more valuable mm -hmm. just to have somebody you can call up and be like okay let's do some fun mm -hmm. stuff mm -hmm. yes this is true this is true i mean i i'm i mean i'm loving the the the, the whole connection i mean there was one time when they had the first comic-con online i was like lame yeah. Yeah. but but the only thing that i think that i did like about it only was the panels because that's yeah. you know i, I love okay. you know yeah. how it was you had to either get badged in yeah. or you had to get get to get your seating arrangements mm -hmm. or until now that they've now recreated the whole section for mm -hmm. specifically panels mm -hmm. which was much more better than going to the mm -hmm. um theater so now you're going from <laughs> you're getting a workout you're going from yes was it 10th avenue 39th street running down all the way to what 6th avenue mm -hmm. to go into madison square garden for the hulu theater oh but wait i got the boys panel i gotta rush back and i'll go to, to, <laughs> oh, to, to the amphitheater to now for that and then mm -hmm. back to comic-con for my other panels mm -hmm. so i went last year at comic-con i went to the um in invincible season two like premiere so mm -hmm. they they would show a screening of uh, Adam Eve, right? Mm -hmm. Remember they had the little mm -hmm. in between episodes. Right. I had to go to Fifty Third, no, yeah, like Fifty Third or Fifty Seventh Street, mm -hmm. and just and to a whole new theater 
just to go and see that screen. So I had to literally leave Comic Con just to do that. <laughs> and like Kirkman was there, he was talking about the new season mm -hmm. and what they were going to do anyway. But it was just like, yeah, I totally understand what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. But I think that's also fun too, because like, mm -hmm. you like nobody else was really there, mm -hmm. so you didn't have to wait on the line. It was just like you and a friend and whoever was on that guest list was there. Mm -hmm. So there's that unique aspect of it just being like that little plus bonus from doing things outside of Comic Con. Yeah. And then how many times are people going to be walking down the street and say, "Is that Batman?" Yeah. <laughs> Is yes. that Robin? Yeah. That's Goku. Oh my God! You yeah. know, they, some people, even though they don't join us, they recognize. Like yeah. when I wear oh, the you're here, you're here. Someone like we did walking right. to Javits. Someone screaming like Goku behind us. Like, okay, I guess they used to saw Goku. When I wore my my um, Hero Within jacket that has a Starfleet uniform on the back, and I'm leaving work, and one day I'm like, I hear somebody go, "No way!" And there's a guy from work who saw the jacket, loves Star Trek, said, where is this? I tell him where he got it from. He said, and it's got the symbol on the side. And I said, all the pockets work. And guess what? It's good when it's cold. Yeah. Wear. <laughs> but again, people are becoming more aware of yes, fandom. And it. even though they're not at the cons, they know. Mm -hmm. They know. And they yeah. share a love for it as well. Mm -hmm. True. Very true. Definitely. And with that, I don't have me on there today, but uh, somewhere along the line, we are going to go open the portal into a commercial. We'll be right back. City's LDM Radio, another long stretch of continuous music. Back, back into time. Flashback. New York City's LDM Radio. Radio station in the world. In the world. Is right here. Right now. Welcome back. The Bright Frost has opened its doors and brought us back to here to gig them again. Notary Ricans, I'm Mo. Rosa. Sean. And we're back. Now, you were mentioning before about your get together and how you have uh -huh. your social when you do the gaming. Mm -hmm. and, and now, have you ever approached the idea of like to introduce this to schools? It's kind of like an after-school program for kids. So that way, let's say that they're not always athletes. Mm -hmm. Not all of us yeah. want to be an, an athlete, but all of us are nerds, and we mm -hmm. you know, we're reading comic books or whatever. Mm -hmm. So as an outlet for them to have that kind of program available mm -hmm. to them so they don't have to, you know, parents don't have to be concerned where their kids are at. <laughs> yeah, we actually... Um partnered for the past two years with the Bronx Gaming Network, and they also are partnered with VX Start. So it's the largest gaming and entrepreneur space in the Bronx. It's actually located 337 East 162nd Street, right? Remember yeah. that address? Yes. Look it up. <laughs> yeah, so we were actually there yesterday doing our anime murder mystery. So they, you know, the building is uh, sponsored by Dream Yard. And if you know Dream Yard, it's an art and cultural nonprofit. So they created VX Start for gaming and entrepreneurship. And for those couple of years, you know, we've worked with the after school program to create uh, anime drawing workshops, cosplay crafting, game design. You know, we've seen that grow in the past couple of years and 
working together with them, it's helped us to understand, you know, I'm a former educator myself, and mm -hmm. working with other educators, we saw, like, you know, I used to do anime clubs or anime workshops when I was teaching, and made me realize that this is something that also could be done after school, outside, in, like, local community centers, mm -hmm. and I think that's something we still want to do, mm -hmm. and we find our own niche to do, like, we create the, uh, there's a little, um, Art workshop we do called Creation Station. Yeah, it started off in uh, Comic Con as created by our founder uh, Ed mm -hmm. Uh It's just you know teaching kids that they can create their own characters and help them with the skills to do so. So it's been around for a long time. It's mostly been done at Comic Con. Right. So every year at Comic Con, it was being hosted in uh, you know one of the panel rooms. The family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so now we're trying to expand it out into our communities yeah. as well. Um, <laughs> We've done a lot so far with the communities, well, whether it's um, uh, donations, raffling, hosting events, participating in community um, events and fairs and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we've done a lot of stuff like that. Yeah, we've done uh, like the yeah. school, back to school, like drive. anime or cosplay drive, video yeah. game drive. We've yeah. done like a Halloween one. We've done Christmas yeah. ones, like, you know, Thanksgiving giveaways. So, yeah. you know, working together with Junior and um, VX Star with Bronze Gaming Network really opened a lot of doors for us and mm -hmm. saw like, okay, this is a space that, you know, those kids who are loving that and even the parents come to us like, mm -hmm. oh my God, I wish we had this and I'm so glad that my child could come here and not only like just have a space to hang out, but they could learn a skill and mm -hmm. learn if they want to get into this career path and learn from teaching artists who are actual artists and game designers or, you know, whatever mm -hmm. we, they are. Oh, that's there. my humble beginnings when yeah. I said on my first show, it's like, I had a better reading and understanding through comics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, you know, you had, you know, you had your English class. And it's mm -hmm. like, I'm rat catching a rifle. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give me the Incredible Hulk. <laughs> and I'm reading this, but the thing is, as I'm reading it, and I, and it's mm -hmm. not like, you know, back in the days, you, the, the conversation was, I will stop you with my manta ray. No, mm -hmm. it got more, more elaborate with the storytelling so mm -hmm. that you understand what was good, what was evil. And then, of course, you know, you had words that just like, oh, 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 gamma what? Mm -hmm. Metamorph what? And then I'm busy saying, I'm actually picking up a dictionary. I'm in fifth grade, right? And then they're thinking, you know, uh, you know I'm special because I'm, you know, mm -hmm. I'm a special ed kid because I don't pay attention. I got ADD. Mm -hmm. Okay, but when it came to the regents exam and my reading, mm -hmm. through the roof, I was reading a high school level. And it's like, he's fifth grade. How could he be reading that well? <laughs> Marvel, yeah. DC, thank you. Yeah. yeah. So just to say that, just because it's a comic book, it doesn't mean you can't learn anything from it. You know, it's like mm -hmm. in, again, same humble beginnings. I understood more about racism by reading Chris Claremont's X Men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, and even though I was in a neighborhood, Spanish Harlem, 116 between second mm -hmm. and third, where that was rampant, but I was more at home. Right. And the little store right next to the front of my building, where this old man would let me sit in here on the floor, and he would have boxes of comic books that he got. I mean, it's a variety of story of nothing, but mm -hmm. he had got boxes of comics. Let me sit in the corner, and I'm just flipping mm -hmm. through, buying what I want, reading half the time in there. So mm -hmm. I was, in my mind, I kept thinking, if there was ever such a place like this, I mean, how many kids could thrive through that? Yeah. I, I'll also say this, like, um, the kids today are very different. Mm -hmm. Like, very different. And, um, even so, like, you know, nothing really changes with them as well. <laughs> they do want your attention. They do want a place to sit down and do be who they want to become. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we just have to find the new routes of doing that. Like, mm -hmm. like you would sit down in the corner and read a comic book for a while. The kids today don't. That's not their thing. They don't no. need a tablet or something like that right. or whatever it is. But we just try to cater to, um, to all aspects of that. And even the older and young folks, like, I feel like the more comfortable the older folks get with like what they do and what they love helps their kid to get comfortable mm -hmm. with who they are as well. Sure. So it's it's that that's the main thing we want people to take away from our organization and what we do. Even if we do stuff catering to the younger folks as well, we do cater to the older folks that hasn't like that hasn't figured it out as yet. Because like sometimes you know you you had something that you were interested in, but somebody made fun or somebody did this, and you put it away, you hid it, or you uh, you wanted to become an artist, illustrator, voice actor, whatever it was, right. and you, somebody was like, "That's stupid. That's dumb. There's no money in that," and you kind of fell back from that as well too. So we just want it to be known, like you know, we we cater we cater to very vast 
broad community as much as possible. And I think it's letting schools know now, too, that this is something that's not going away. This is like what the students are into. And Mm -hmm. if those schools learn to play on that, they could, you know, bring that educational aspect to it. Because sometimes the schools, of course, (laughs) you know, they are so into like, what's their ELA scores? What's their math scores? But it's like, well, sometimes you have to get them into a comfortable area to let their artistic outlet out. And I think for us is, you know, still wanting to work, you know, me as a former educator, I still want to work with young people, you know, I have children of my own, and I see that they have this passion. So we're working together as an organization to create that culture and find ways that they could, you know, students have a place that they could go to, they could love. But, you know, the school also is involved. And so it's bringing back, like, mm-hmm. them, their love of anime, comics, and games into, like, a school community. Because we see it in Japan. So, yeah. like, yeah. you know, our whole yeah. emphasis of our brand is, like, cross-cultural fusion. So it's, yeah. like, how can we bring a taste of that into our school system and into our community? Yeah, and uh, I'm just say for, for my aspect as well, Rosa does have her, her aspects. But also, like, I do understand, like, you know, the road less travel, right? Like... Like a lot of people don't go down the same road as well. Some people mm-hmm. we do have people that aren't gonna like adapt to the school system, mm-hmm. and I also want them to know like there is a place for them as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like I think nowadays everybody wants people to conform to some th- certain things and certain routes. There's and many it's, different yeah, paths. and there's many different paths. Mm-hmm. And as much as, like I said, you just know, even though you know we're doing a lot of stuff for the kids, I do want those kids to know like we're going to do stuff if you don't want to go down that road as mm-hmm. well as too. Definitely. So I, we, yeah. as a father myself, I, I you know my two daughters are now what, 35 and 33 mm-hmm. these days, but in the beginnings, like, I had my comic books and stuff like that, and and they would look, and I'm like, hmm. I mean, but then I said, where did I come from? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Boom, here you go. Mm-hmm. Here's comic books. This is the storyline. This is this character. I mean, I made it a point to mm-hmm sit down with them and, and educate them on the, uh, on the aspects of good and evil and comics mm-hmm. and try to understand characters. Mm-hmm. So, like I always say, like, a, a good story is what captures me. Mm-hmm. If I get hooked on a character, mm-hmm. good or bad, at least I'm following his story and mm-hmm. I'm understanding where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So mm-hmm. then I then came to that, came Star Trek. And then, mm-hmm. and then everything else from anime, oh, from Fist of the North Star, mm-hmm. Guyver, and then from there on, they, they kept on, mm-hmm. they went on their own evolution mm-hmm. and kept on going. But the thing is, they didn't get caught in the fantasy world. Right. Where, where right. some people Before, that are yeah. disconnected right. and their world is only yes. that. Right. So, no. And I also see the reverse of that, too, where mm-hmm. everybody's just trying to um, put the real world into the fantasy stuff as well. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, no, this this is just that escapism. Mm-hmm. We yes. all need to also bring whatever is happening in the real world into the comic mm-hmm. as well. So there's a there's a line of separation. Because mm-hmm. the reason that you were able to format your ideals and your aspects is because you got to read X-Men and even though there were like dealing with world issues, mm-hmm. it wasn't your world issues. Mm-hmm. You know, you could be like, okay, well, I can see this working in any other, like whether it was racism or prejudice or, you know, uh, sexuality, whatever it is, right. you ha- were able to sit down and figure that out. Because you have a broader mind. Yeah. Your okay. eyes are more wide open to the world. Right. And I'd not be sitting there going, <gasps> what? Yeah. And now, you know, we're, we're in the, like, I think that's why kids today, and because we do anime, comics, and gaming, mm-hmm. um, are more leaning more to the anime and manga aspect than comic books today, too. Because we, we kind of see that as well when we do our events. Mm-hmm. Because, uh, again, the reality is going in so much heavy into comic books. Mm-hmm. But when they read a manga, mm-hmm. it's this fantasy stuff, mm-hmm. and it still deals with the topics that you know are there as well. Mm-hmm. Which is yeah. why I'm thinking that's what the publishers are now seeing because mm-hmm. you could see it in comic books how they diverge, how they they, they divert the storyline in a way so that it educates at the same time mm-hmm. tells a story mm-hmm. that captures the audience. The same thing yeah. in manga, like you said. Taking the fantasy up, but they're putting in a little bit yeah. of realism and understanding. Yeah. So that way, the people are reading it, not believing completely Evangelion. They're they're uh, yes. they're now understanding <laughs> yeah. what the story is with, with Evangelion. And I, yeah, yeah, I spoke I, about that in like one of my um, podcast interviews with somebody. They were, we was talking about like that's probably why so many young people nowadays gravitate toward anime, mm-hmm. manga, mangas, or manhwas is because of the 
you know, the reality, you know, the personalities. There's so much more personality with the characters. There's more real life scenarios of like, oh, wait, I'm going through that same thing that, you know, mm -hmm. character's going through. And I can relate yeah. in some way, you know? It, yeah, it's, it's not a, um, you, the, the problem isn't a character trait. And I think not, right. and I don't mean the problem like, oh, this thing is bad. I just mean like you're bringing a topic in, and that's the character trait of the situation or right. the storyline where you're like reading a genuine story. And you're like, oh, well, I'm a teenage, I'm a teenage girl, and I don't know, I can't figure out myself yet. Mm -hmm. And you're reading an anime character that is like basically going through the same thing, like, like, oh. She's seeing this person and having a certain reaction to them. Mm -hmm. She doesn't know how to integrate with certain people. Mm -hmm. They're feeling awkward. You feel, you you can relate to that. I mean, you're never going to become a super saiyan, but <laughs> you, you can actually yeah. understand like maybe working out, like getting defeated, failing at something, and then working your way back up to becoming a better version of yourself. And you always hear those stories, Amen. like especially with when Kira Toriyama passed away and oh, other yes. creators. You know, <laughs> they mentioned that like. You know, me watching Dragon Ball was the reason I kept motivated and I worked out and, you know, yeah. I changed my lifestyle. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like me yeah. as a kid, uh, when, like, six or seven, mm -hmm. same thing, comic books, hiding, whatever, being bullied. Mm -hmm. Then came this one movie called Godzilla's Revenge. Mm -hmm. And then that was where the kid had this little mini radio set up and he mm -hmm. said, Call me in your son. And he yeah. just, all of a sudden, his imagination took him to Monster Island yeah. where he met Godzilla's son and then helped yeah. him yeah. deal with the bully Gabra yeah. and that was like okay yeah uh, you just yeah. if you stand yeah. up to the bully yeah yeah yeah. yeah. I mean of course it didn't work exactly like that but yes. I yeah. did stand up for myself mm -hmm. the bully later on then became my best friend mm -hmm. because yeah. I stood up yeah. and he respected me not not yeah. looking down at me yeah. and yeah. saying well I have power over you no yeah. I yeah. showed that I had this yeah. thing showed me how to stand up for myself. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think, cool. and, and, yeah, and I think that's the thing too. Like we, like as we do more of these mixers and come mm -hmm. together and collaborations, we see like that is one of the hurdles of geekdom nowadays mm -hmm. where it's just like, like before, you know, you were like, oh yeah, I'm this or that. And people would be like, yeah, you reading this? I'm reading that. Mm -hmm. Nowadays it's more like, uh, can I tell you that I'm reading this? Is it okay to talk about this topic? Exactly. And, it, you know, we try to make that more lax. Like, mm -hmm. just chill out, have a good time. Mm -hmm. It's not about, like, you know, whatever else is going on. Like, I, I, I kind of consider us having the rules of a bar. You know, <laughs> no politics, no religion. Right. And, like, right. that's just, like, how we roll. Like, mm -hmm. none of that. Just come in and relax and be yourself. And you get out of line, you get, they have a lightsaber that says the peacemaker yeah. on the wall. Leave yeah. your yeah. ego at the door. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Because it, it's all about fun. It's all about enjoying what you love. Yeah. But it's not about then your ego say, well, Goku's better than Vegeta any day. Well, yeah. You can yeah. have that fun argument. It's like right, the same thing right. with Batman and, yeah. and Superman. But at the end of the day, it's still fandom. It's still yeah. the enjoyment of yes. both these characters. Yeah. Exactly. It's not who's better. Yeah. It's what you enjoy most right. about it. Mm -hmm. right. And right now, again, the Bifrost shall be open and we'll be sucked into a commercial. <laughs> See you in a bit. Welcome back. Um, sorry about that, folks, but the Bifrost sometimes has a bit ripples. Yeah. Okay, okay. now, yeah, yeah. back to you know, Tokyo Bronx yeah, here. Good. And one thing I wanted to touch on, yeah, mm -hmm. sure. let me just make myself look pretty again. <laughs> so, as I was going to uh, touch on, as far as cosplay is concerned, yeah. Yeah. Uh, as far as when you do the adult section, now, mm -hmm. how huge does that become? Mm -hmm. And where do you see the difference in where cosplay and fantasy could either co-mingle or just get broken mm -hmm. apart uh i'll say this i think like it's cool when people do it for the love of it yeah. I, yes. I yeah but 
when it starts to come down to like right now, it is becoming a very interesting community growing out of the cosplay scene where, you know, uh, you could become popular just from doing cosplay. Mm -hmm. So a couple of events last year that we've done and also I've done by myself, I've seen people have their own table for being a cosplayer. Mm -hmm. So they're selling their photos, they're, they're setting set up people to be on their like fan sites. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be like, I don't like it's OF or something like that, but just, you know, Instagram or something like that. Right. So it's becoming marketed that they cosplay as this certain character and they have a crowd behind it. Mm -hmm. That's when it gets a little, you know, funny. Mm -hmm. um, and you have to be careful of that too, because these are the people that also participate in uh, the contests as well. Because you mm -hmm. know, if you're a big, oh, if if you have a like uh, 150 thousand, I'm being exaggerated with number, mm -hmm. but if you have a lot of followers, that also becomes an issue. Your followers become the people that handle certain situations mm -hmm. for you and step in because maybe you didn't win this contest and they feel that mm -hmm. you got cheated. Mm -hmm. So like the. As an adult cosplayer, there's a little bit more responsibility than the younger mm -hmm. folks. Mm -hmm. The younger folks are more trying to figure out who they are yeah. within cosplay. Right. And mm -hmm. it could be, you know, it could be a little bit high schoolish as well. <laughs> so I'm seeing that. Yeah. So it could be interesting. And I think there's a good aspect of it too, where I see like the people doing the teaching, like also the, the people that do the repairs as well, where you see mm -hmm. these like groups go to the conventions that they have automatic repair uh, setups for people to get their costume repair on the spot. Mm -hmm. There are beautiful things like that, but then also again, like I said, there's that other aspect of it. The other aspect. Of it. And yeah, I think it's a new real. community yeah. as well. I would say out of like, mm -hmm. oops, excuse me. Sorry. It's a Bifrost. After effects of the Bifrost. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would say, um, yeah. It's a new community because, you know, we like we've mentioned before, there's the other Star Trek community, there's the mm -hmm. Marvel community, mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, there's other fandom communities. So the cosplay community, even though it's been around forever, but it wasn't like noticed in the public. It was like you were saying, you got to like put your coat on and like then change and, or, you know, have your group yeah. of friends there. So I think now it's getting more publicity. Like you even seen big conventions highlighting, spotlighting cosplay influencers. Like, oh, here you go. We have this cosplay influencer coming in and we're going to build a whole space for them, a whole spot for them, you know? So yeah. that's taken away from other things and like, you know, other yeah. spaces. So just seeing how like the cosplay community is growing, but it comes to more of like, um, where do we find the older generation of cosplayers that did it a long time ago mm -hmm. and mentor or teach like, hey, we do it in, you know, this is like how we learned it. We had to do it like this. And how do you teach the younger, gen I think everything's like this. How do you teach the younger generation of cosplayers to get out of that mentality of like this is what i'm doing but like how you come together and bring that creativity where the egos yes. don't get involved exactly yes like, um, my version of goku yeah. is better than your yes. version of goku but yeah. also here, here's the issue too right remember a couple of years ago we didn't have such a thing as social media True. and a lot of those too. people that did cosplay you, you remember that show on sci-fi channel that um stanley used to host where it was like a whole bunch of people learn to do cosplay and they would do their own costumes yes. and they were trying to mm -hmm. win yes. to become yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you had to be you had to work your way to get mm -hmm. to something like that. Mm -hmm. and some of them were working to be what they call fabricators, which then right. yeah. people would come to them because they won yes. so many contests to yeah. then fabricate mm -hmm. a suit for that person. And not only that, it was also another field as well where it was like uh people who were doing like monster designs and also ex um I'm saying the wrong word. Sorry, apologies. But uh, uh, FX, yeah, FX, FX, yeah. FX, yes. yeah. FX uh, design and stuff like mm -hmm. that. You would lead to get work after that. You would yeah. actually work on mm -hmm. other stuff. This is more it's now. Yeah. yeah, it's way yeah. more different. It's more like personalized mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But also, like, how do you? Um, I think people don't also recognize like uh, how much work that person, the older generation, had to put in mm -hmm. for them mm -hmm. to be able to do what they do now. So they think it's so easy to do now because they like, oh, I, I'm going to pay this guy to make my costume right. and then I'll be this character for the whole year. Mm -hmm. And that's how I build my fandom. And then yeah. you're like, well, you don't remember the, like those people that actually had a goal. Like one thing I think that really, uh, to me hurt the cosplay community, the adult cosplay community is actually the, uh, toning down of, uh, booth babes as they were called back in the days. Oh, <laughs> like, yes. le yeah, but, that did help a lot of cosplayers blow up because how else were you seen? 
you had to go to a convention and dress up as that character and mm-hmm. stand at the booth to start getting recognition. Yeah. Like, like people forget about that. It's so, like becoming a celebrity. And then with the same thing as, I mean, in comparison mm-hmm. to a celebrity, almost the same because in that sense, people are looking up to you. Yeah. And then people are following you. Right. So whatever comes out of your mouth or whatever you wind up wearing, it's okay. Yeah. Because she would, did yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. But I also I like, would say the opposite of that, too. I would yeah. say, like, we're living now in, a, like we said, a social network society mm-hmm. that we don't need those booths anymore, you know? So oh. we have to figure out how do we still keep the former cosplay community, like how it was, mm-hmm. and how do we fuse that with like what the cosplay community is now because with the cosplay community now is like they have social media and things are picking up quick as opposed to like before it was like you know it took a while to meet those people and meet those friends but now with the social media now it's like you have the young community that are getting that quick reaction but I think the question is more so how how do you handle that quick you know 15 seconds of fame you know that you're getting and again I, I, I get where you're coming from but I think that's why that was so um, important back in the days. Mm-hmm. Even though you don't need it now, which is fair enough, mm-hmm. fair enough. But because you're a booth babe and you had to mm-hmm. do it in public, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you had to be comfortable. Mm-hmm. You had to learn to talk to people. Right. You had to be sociable. Like uh, Jessica Nagari, right? Mm-hmm. Um, this is that's the lady that plays Chainsaw Lollipop. Remember, you know yeah. who that is. Yeah. So she was a cosplayer before, mm-hmm. and she would go to booths and just do it for free. Mm-hmm. And she'd be like, "Hey, okay, you want to promote this video mm-hmm. game?" All right, you need, um, oh, you want Samus? Okay, I'll dress up like Samus. I'll make my mm-hmm. costume. And then look, mm-hmm. from that, she was able to get her own video game. Like, the, the character is definitely based on her, right? Mm-hmm. So people were so inspired, they made a game based around her. She played that character for a whole year to promote that video game. Mm-hmm. She built her stuff. If you see her now, she has a uh, Twitch channel, and mm-hmm. she does show how to make cosplay and stuff mm-hmm. like that. But, but again... Because people don't have to make those steps that the older folks did. Mm-hmm. Like, again, I don't have to go to the store and buy paper mm-hmm. to go and make a comic book anymore. I can do it on my tablet. Mm-hmm. I don't need right. to go and uh, go and contact some uh, TV company to make a comic book show and try to convince them mm-hmm. to produce it. I can go on YouTube and make mm-hmm. my own channel. Mm-hmm. Those oh, steps do, that are eliminated do take away something from the uh, younger generation that they will never understand. And I think what it takes, yeah. 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 And and I think what it takes away easy. from is yeah. the, uh, what I think what it is, is that it's not the creative piece. The creative piece is always there. I yeah. think it's the social right. interaction piece, which we've right. touched yeah. based on. I think right. if that's the element that's missing that the previous decades of cosplay had, that now the new generation is trying to figure out because social right. media is their voice, is right. their character. Right. But it's like, yeah. how do they find their voice, right? How do right. they find their... You know, that, that social piece of it, that social let, skill. Let, let's, okay. So remember the last year when you cosplay at our booth, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. How was that interaction for you? Like, mm-hmm. I know you, you, um, it's not always a, a something that you're, you do for a long time, but even so when you do it, it's playing you, the character. Yeah. yeah right. It's playing the character, yes. but also you do get something out of it. It makes people, you build a better bond. Oh, definitely. You, you, mm-hmm. Even if you don't blow up online and have mm-hmm. like thousands of followers, yeah. that person will not forget having that little moment with you. It's those yeah. interactions. Yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah, with I had that. that same thing myself. Like yeah. whenever I put in, like for instance, uh, I'm part of a <clears throat> fan-owned entertainment group mm-hmm. called Legion M, and mm-hmm. we had an event where we actually filmed the documentary about Bill Shatner. Oh, mm-hmm. nice. So they had a red carpet event with him there, yeah. and some of my group. Uh, mm-hmm. People were there mm-hmm. to come in, so I came in uniform. So I had a what I call a combo mix of from the show Strange New Worlds dress uniform, yeah. mm-hmm. and then I had Kirk's actual medals that he wore with his strange with his um mm-hmm. with his uniform on an episode where it was called Court Martial. Yeah. So I'm dressed in that, mm-hmm. but every five minutes, good. Can I get a picture with you? Can I get? Mm-hmm. And then these are people that 
our fans, yeah. definitely of Shatner, yeah. but mm -hmm. some of them were not even here from this country. They heard about it, they came in. Yeah. Comic Con was the same thing. Mm -hmm. I ran into people from Mexico. Right. They said, Can I take a picture with you? They said, Yeah. yeah. Boom, put the sign yeah. up. Yeah. They love it. That little moment yeah. was all they needed. Yes. And that was great. For me, that yeah. felt great yeah. to do that. Because I never understood. Say, I understood from one end, I take a picture because I love taking pictures. Yeah. The cosplays, the more original, the, 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 the quality behind it, I'm yeah. capturing a picture. Right. Right. Mm. And, I, and I think that you, the, the cosplayers of today, because they do it behind a camera, it, it gives them a bit of delusion yeah. <laughs> because, like, they don't know what it is to, like, get that true interaction. Mm -hmm. And then when they get the true interaction, they don't know what to do with it. Right. So it's, it's a beautiful thing. Like I said, it's growing. It's, uh, I think it's a, a social media yeah. thing as a yeah. whole, like, that yeah. whole, like, but, when you lift up that veil mm -hmm. of but social also, media. <laughs> but also going back to what you were saying, mm -hmm. there has to, there has to be someone to, to pass the torch and yes, let them definitely. understand, as you said, the difference between behind the camera yep. and socially interacting. Because yeah. cosplayers back when I was going to creation conventions, when they were dressed like Vulcans, mm -hmm. especially my favorite when they come in mm -hmm. as Klingons, yeah. mm -hmm. they had makeup work, all of that. But there were also people too, and they socially right. interacted with themselves. Mm -hmm. And there was no like, there was no blown up head 15 minutes of, oh my God, I'm the superstar. No. <laughs> yeah, I remember like when the transition transition happened, like mm -hmm. I remember in like uh, the early 2010s, there were still like booth babes and cosplayers. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm using the term booth babe loosely, but there was mm -hmm. literally people like cosplaying in front of booths. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was like one, it brought out attention, but also it helped mm -hmm. them get notoriety and mm -hmm. got more work mm -hmm. in other things. And what happened is it's just like it just kept getting like less and less and it was like um mm -hmm. I remember the, the year that the uh Comic Con put up the sign like you have to ask for pictures mm -hmm. and I was like, Who wasn't doing that? Mm -hmm. Like it was like this thing mm -hmm. and then er the energy got weird after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like that kinda also put a little bit of hurt on the adult cosplay community as well mm -hmm. especially when a lot of uh cons were doing that mm -hmm. and stopping that like okay yes Are, can people be awkward totally we get it like yeah. i've <laughs> i've had people break down the entire comic book in front of me because they heard i was an artist and they're like oh so i did the page one and, da -da -da -da, and you're gonna get that mm -hmm. um but and, the, and, and again there's bad actors as well too mm -hmm. but I don't think that's something for the majority. I think everybody asks, even when it comes to both male and mm -hmm. female. It's yes. an equal opportunity thing. Mm -hmm. And the right people will ask you, but it just got, oh, like, you know, it, again, the cosplay community is interesting. Mm -hmm. I, and like, it's, and then also to people forget that, like, with social media, you don't own anything either. Like, no, like, they don't. Yeah. yeah, and they don't get it. Like, Facebook put out, I know, I'm sorry, I'm getting too deep here, but Facebook, <laughs> all these different um, platforms have told you mm -hmm. that once you put stuff on their site, they it's theirs. You. Yeah. So, like, you have to understand that. So when you see people repost you or put your stuff out there or whatever or use for something that it wasn't meant to be used for, like, you already gave away that right. Not saying that mm -hmm. you don't own it, but, again, that's why I still understand, like, to me, I feel like the older crowd, the people that had to work so hard, like they had to dress up like Chung Li. You know how many people had could have said cease and desist? Right. People dress mm -hmm. as cosplay characters now that Nintendo tells people to cease and desist. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. like you gotta work hard. You still should work a little bit. I'm just saying. Like, mm -hmm. like that's my opinion. <laughs> and we value those kind of yeah. opinions. Yeah. I think it's finding the originality in between like, you know, the whole creative process. You know, you appreciate the character, you appreciate the, the lore of it, but it's like, I think to make that distinction is putting your originality, uniqueness in that picture. Yeah, so. yes. Yeah, yeah. Because you want to pay homage to the character that you love. Mm -hmm. You know, but then there's that line that you try not to cross mm -hmm. over yeah. where mm -hmm. it becomes homage to, uh, no, this is not child friendly. Yeah. So you want to put that mm -hmm. to the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been to a couple mm -hmm. of cons like that where I was like, Whoa, this is a lot. Just for like, mm -hmm. just uh, and it's it's and it's a kid event. They call it reading the room. Yeah, right? yeah, no yeah, yeah, yeah. No one's reading the room anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and no, no one's reading the room. Or well, at least if they are, you just see one expression. 
but maybe yes. <laughs> maybe reading the room is the internet room. That's it. Because right. everything yeah. is on the internet, and you see so much stuff there, so people think uh. the equivalency of real life is the internet. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah, exactly, Gage. exactly. That's that's where that fine line has to come in, yeah. mm-hmm. because after that, it's like now you're no longer a considered a cosplay player. Now you're just like a figurehead celebrity, mm-hmm. but yeah. they're now only looking at you not from your cosplay world. Mm-hmm. As far as paying homage to the fan, but yeah. you know, oh yeah, she's the one that's large up front, always three times, three quarters, half naked. Yeah, I know her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, no, you don't mm-hmm. want to be known as that. But unfortunately, there are those who take that line over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and that's the thing too. I, I, like I said, it's, there's a couple of bad actors, but I do think like they take away from the people that do really cool, unique stuff. Exactly. I really love the fandom, mm-hmm. and like, like I like like she was saying, there's so many World Peace characters. How many characters in One Piece wear like you know maybe like shirtless or this or that? And mm-hmm. you know some people will think, but some people just want to pay homage to that character. You know, there's mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. And I, and then it's a balance, like you said. Right now, we just try to still figure it out. I think that's where I we're think at. letting people have their own creative uniqueness is important as well. Like mm-hmm. it shouldn't just be one way to create to look like the character. Yeah. I think it's letting you know all like they say cosplay is all shapes, sizes, colors. True. It doesn't yeah. matter. True. Yeah. Mm-hmm. True. But there's also should be mm-hmm. somewhat mm-hmm. of a civility behind it because if they wanted the, the the character to look a certain way beyond. From what they designed, they yeah. would have designed it. Exactly. Now, yes. of course, in anime, there are characters who are already drawn a certain yeah. way. You're mm-hmm. sitting there going, "Oh my dear!" Mm. But yeah. there is some. Um, there's a purpose because yeah. that character has to look. That so way. if you, yes. if you, I, I think you went to the last comic con, no anime NYC. Mm-hmm. Um, what was the that a cosplay like festival like the whole like the masquerade the, the masquerade yes. ball uh, the masquerade and, ball. yeah. And you saw a really great amazing, pieces stand yeah. out. Amazing craftsmanship. And, yeah. yeah, and it wasn't the the stuff that you were talking about right now. It's the real, the guys that made the whole armor set, the whole everything from a video game mm-hmm. or uh, from a TV show. Like I think the guy that won was Berserk. A Berserk. It was the the, the, the Casca and Guts from Berserk. Yeah, yeah. they won mm-hmm. based on their, you know just the craftsmanship. That's the yeah. important piece. Yeah. The yeah. Of it. yeah. Mm-hmm. So again, the the good people will shine out. It's just that right now, you know, you focus on the. Uh, of we see the Instagrammables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the Instagrammables, yeah. you know, the fat old saying sex cells and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that. So, so yeah. yeah. It is what it is. It is what it is. It's true. It's true. Just like everywhere, everything has that. Yeah, man. And with that, again, I'm feeling the pull of the bride frost and saying to all of you, have a good day. I'm Mo. Rosa. Sean. Thanks for being part of Notre Weekends. Until the next time, people, have fun. Akuna Matata. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>